Mr. Fleischman, was there anything else that you could see or feel during the course of this experiment? Well, could you repeat the question, please? Was there anything else that you could see or feel during the course of this experiment no. that, that gave you uh, more, no. more information that you were actually generating nuclear fusion? No, I think uh, Professor Pons has given the, uh, really the correct description. The main indication which we had that we had nuclear fusion was the extremely large release of and continued release of energy, of heat energy you know, from sorry. the electrode. Scientists the world over and governments have spent, as I understand it, billions of dollars with very sophisticated equipment trying to generate the incredible amount of heat that, that uh, would simulate the heat in the sun to create this reaction. What led you to think that you could do it at room temperature? Well, the conditions in uh, this uh, cell, the conditions in the electrochemical cell are completely different to the conditions which are now investigated in the conventional approaches to nuclear fusion. I think one can best explain it in quantita simple quantitative terms by saying that if you pass an electric current into the cathode under the conditions which we have used, then if you try to achieve the same conditions in the cathode by compression of the gas, you would need a billion, billion, billion atmospheres. Of, uh, uh, that is a billion, billion, billion times the pressure at the surface of the Earth. Mm. And it is this enormous compression of the species in the lattice which made us think that it might be feasible to create conditions for fusion in such a simple reactor. What were the chances of this working, Mr. Pons? What were the chances or what? I read today somewhere it was like one in a billion. Well, I mean, any, the, we, we thought it was a very small chance. I, I don't know exactly how to answer what the, you know, what the odds are, but I mean, the science seemed perfectly reasonable. That's why we tried it. We, we just felt that uh, there many other things could have been going on, and that's what we've taken four years to check out you to make absolutely sure to our satisfaction that it's not due to any other process. You heard the things that I articulated going into the piece about the, the possibilities with this uh, kind of process, the uh, cheap, inexhaustible, safe supply. What are some of the other benefits of this uh, particular kind of energy that you can think of? Greenhouse. Well, yeah, the, the to me, the most important uh, asset of such uh, of fusion energy is, of course, the elimination of uh, of uh, pollution of our of our atmosphere. Uh, the greenhouse effect, uh, pollution, the ozone penetration of the of our upper uh, atmosphere. These things could be eliminated due to the fact we would not be putting anything into the atmosphere. And also, I understood that that it will have some Im effect on acid rain. Is that right, Mr. Fleischman? Yes. Well. If you uh, do not burn fossil fuel, you, of course, eliminate the production of sulfur dioxide, which is the cause of uh, acid rain in our environment. Mm -hmm. well, so, sorry. Yes. Well, well any step to uh, alleviate the production of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, of acid rain, and uh, carbon dioxide pollution of the atmosphere is desirable. What will it take to develop this technology uh, into some usable, uh, uh, something usable for generating heat and electricity and, and energy? Mr. Bonds? Uh, go ahead. What? what? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the technology that's going to be required uh, can be envisioned. I mean, there, there are lots of different types of cells and a lot of different types of devices that you can imagine. Basically, what we're producing here, it will be uh, the first product will be hot water. So you would use this to either drive some sort of uh, a generator or a turbine to generate electricity. Uh, ag again, we think that the, that the technology that we're facing here is much simpler to accomplish than the more conventional methods. So how I think we have a very good chance of, of pulling it off. How soon do you think we will see its benefits? How soon will it be possible to see its benefits? Well, I think laboratory prototypes could be built fairly soon, but I would not look for a commercial or a device 
10 years no a minimum that would be an absolute minimum i think 20. 10 years 20, 20 years 10 so. to 20 years mm -hmm. mr fleischman many of the scientists on our staff talked with today are skeptical about what you've done how do you plan to convince them that this is really the break <coughs> breakthrough that it's being hailed as in some quarters well we have been skeptical about it now for five years and uh, as I explained earlier on this afternoon, you can never prove a scientific discovery right. You can only prove it wrong. And I think others will have to examine our results, extend them, and try and see whether it, our interpretation is in fact correct, or partly correct, or wholly correct. So only, the, only time will show uh, whether uh, this is so and whether we can take the next step towards developing the technology. Ms. P Mr. Pons, when will this be available for scrutiny by the scientific community? I would anticipate that it will be in the literature sometime in May. Sometime in May? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. May for I come back on this? May yes. I come back on this, do you think? Yes. I would strongly urge everybody to wait until the work is described in the scientific literature before they attempt any such experiments. Is, is there any particular reason for that? Well, in any experiments on nuclear energy, one has to be cautious. And I think I would commend people to wait until the publications appear in May. All right. Well, that's a very good caution. I'm not sure I understood everything that uh, you, you all said, but uh, we'll look forward to the results of your work. Thank you very much, Mr. Fleischman and Mr. Pons, for being with us. Thank you Thank very you. much.